All right, so now that we can collect items, with like a sword and a shield and move around, it's really time that we find a way to animate them so that we can actually do some battle with these enemies that are chasing us. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is create some animations. Now to do this, you're gonna to need to head up into the window head down to animation and select the animation pane. Likely for you, it will be floating when you first click on it. And I just encourage you to dock it at the bottom. Once you've done this, you can now click on your player sprite and hit the create button in order to create an animation. So I'm just going to back up, go to assets, where I'm actually going to create a new folder that I will call animations. Inside of this, I'm going to begin by creating an idle animation for my player. I'm going to zoom in on him here so I can get a good look. And while still clicked on my player, I'm going to hit the record button. You'll notice now that my timeline here has turned red, and this just gives me the opportunity to make changes to my game object. I simply want to make a little bit of squash and stretch happen so that it looks like my player is sort of breathing while idling. To do this, I'm just going to click up here on my scale tool and begin with a little bit of stretching. You notice that as I make those changes, they appear on my timeline because I've hit record. I'm going to hit the 30th frame where I'm going to stretch things out. And then what I'm just going to do, because this is a looping animation, is grab the animation that I started with and paste it here at the end. I'll turn off record. And now when I hit play, you'll notice that I get this breathing sort of squash and stretch animation happening. I can now click on my animator. Now, if yours is not there already, you can go window animation and animator. And you'll notice now that on entry, your default set state is idle animation. And so now when you hit play, your game will automatically default to idle. Now, as I go around and collect my items, you'll notice that I get a nice squash and stretch that just makes it feel a little more alive. Our next step now is going to be to actually create our attack animation. At this point, I'm gonna move into my scene where I will click on my player. And we're gonna create a new animation here. So over here where it says idle animation, we can go create new clip. I'm gonna call this one sword slash. All right, now to animate our attack motion, we're gonna to wanna to do a couple of things. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your sword is actually in your sword hand and your shield is in the shield hand. We'll also just make sure to set the local scale on these to zero so that they are in the same position they will be when you actually pick them up in the game. Now at this point, it would be really tempted for our animation to hit the record button and start moving the sword and shield and attacking with them. But it's important to remember here that there will be different weapons that we're equipping to our character throughout the game. And so we don't want it to be the weapon itself that is doing the movement. We want it to be the hands. And so I'm gonna click on my sword hand here and for my very first frame of animation, once I've hit record, I'm simply going to get the sword into position. And I'm working with the sword hand here, remember. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit and rotate it out like I'm winding up for a swing. And actually, I'll keep rotating the hand a little more so that it comes out a little further. From here, I'm just going to move over a couple of frames and slowly animate the sword coming across my body in a swiping motion. And as all of this is happening, we also want to animate our shield. So we'll go back to the first frame. Make sure that you are clicked on your shield hand, not the shield itself. And we're just going to cause it to slowly move across the body and rotate as it does so. Now, one little important note here at the end is because this is not a looping animation, we want to make sure that we set one more frame. So you'll notice that our first frame lasts for two. Next one goes for two, for two for two, and this one though has no two frames afterwards. And so to make this frame last just a little longer, I'm gonna click and drag to select all of these final nodes here, move over to and paste them in. I'm now gonna stop recording, hit play, and we'll get a feel for what this chop motion looks like. Now, if you feel like that's a little too quick, you can actually click and drag the entire thing and you can try slowing it down so that it takes place over a longer period of time hit play, and there you go. Now, obviously the looping animation looks a little bit funny. So I'm gonna click on project here, head over to animations. And for my sword slash, I'm just going to simply unclick the loop time button. I can now head to my animator. And at the moment, while at entry, I want to begin my idle animation. 
I also want to have the ability from any state to enter a sword slash. So whether I'm idle or walking or jumping or whatever I'm doing, I want to have the opportunity to sword slash. So I'm going to right click here and make a transition that leads to sword slash. Now essentially what I want to do is create it so that when this is triggered, it sword slashes once and then returns to idle animation. So I need to make a trigger. I'm going to head over here to parameters. I'll hit the plus button. And I'm going to make a trigger, which I will call sword slash. Now, when I click on the transition here, I can come over to my conditions, hit plus, and now sword slash is the trigger that will start it. Now, I want to make sure I do not want to click exit time because I want to have a really quick move so that the moment I push the button, the sword slash happens. So I'm going to take my transition duration down to zero. Finally, I do want to make a transition from sword slash that once it's done, I go back to idling. So I will right click, hit make transition, and head on down here. And this one is simply going to, this time I will want to have some, well, I don't necessarily need exit time, but I am going to want to have a duration here. I'm actually going to set this for, um, I think I did it for 20 seconds, so I'll go just a little more than that. Let's try 25. At this point, I can head into my assets, go to my scripts folder. Now, often things to do with animations like this might end up getting put in our player controller, but I want to try to keep things relatively separate. Partly it'll make this tutorial more useful so that if you're just wanting this one script, it will be helpful. But also it just makes things simpler later on to have multiple scripts rather than monster scripts that have everything. So I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to call this one player combat. Now, when we open this up, we're going to just begin by creating a new variable. This one is going to be a public animator, and we'll call this one player anim. And what we want to happen is when we push a certain button, we want to set the trigger that will cause us to attack. So for this one, we're going to head down into update because we want the game to constantly check for this input. So simply if our input and what the input it's going to look for specifically is get button down. So when I push the button, then in brackets, we're going to put the name of the button. I'm actually going to use the fire one button. So anytime that is pushed, we're going to have this trigger happen. Now, this fire one is a bit of a weird command because there's no key on our keyboard, obviously called fire one. Now, what this actually is, is a reference to our input manager, which you can find in Unity when you go to edit project settings. From here, you can click on the input manager open up your axes and you'll notice things like your horizontal and vertical axis in here, which we use for our movement script. There's also the fire one option. And this is where you can map different keys to fire. At the moment though, it's set to return and I like the way that works just fine. So I'll leave it. All right, so once you push that return button or whatever you choose to map as your fire one button, what we want to happen is we want to access our player animator. And we want to set the trigger that we just created. Now that trigger is called sword slash. And all we want to do is trigger it. And so that's all we need. Back in Unity, there's just two things left to do. I'm going to click on my player first of all. And I want to add player combat. And this one is just going to want to know, well, which animator do I need to speak to? And so we want to drag our animator into that spot. There's one other little problem that's going to show up when we get into play mode here, but I'll just wait a moment to show you how that plays out. So at the moment now, I've got my natural idle movement as I'm moving around. And when I hit the return key, you'll notice that I get my sword slash. Now at the moment, the sword slash is just staying up there all the time. So if you take a look up here, you'll notice that I'm stuck. And that's actually just because I made a little error. I do want to have exit time set. I can now use the return key to do a quick swipe. You can play with what this looks like. I feel like mine could probably use a little bit of work to feel a little more like a real attack, but it's coming along pretty nicely. All right, next tutorial, we'll look at how to make our player rotate and eventually how to actually deal some damage. But for now, go ahead and give this one a try for yourself.